Okay, so we're going to talk about affirmative two commands, which I will now put in the review. There we go. Affirmative two commands. <clears throat> Hopefully y'all learned this last year in Spanish um, two, but basically just like we talk to people in the two form or the usted form, there's two different ways to give commands than the two form and the usted form. The two commands in the affirmative form are the easiest ones to remember. But the way that I like to tell them to y'all is, they are very easy, but keep in mind that they're actually the freaks here. Because when we get to negative two commands and usted and ustedes commands, those are all the same and they follow the same patterns. Affirmative two commands do not. So these are the freaks, but right now they're going to be the easiest to learn. So hopefully you already know how to give affirmative commands to someone you address as two. And the only thing you have to do is use the third person form of the verb or the usted form of the verb. So actually third person is probably a better way to think of it. For example, camina por la puerta is the affirmative to command of to tell someone to walk uh, through the door. So instead of caminas, because that would be the to form of the verb, when I turn it into a command, I say it like this, camina por la puerta. And with the verb comer, I would say come la cena instead of comes la cena. Comes la cena means you eat the dinner, and then come la cena means eat the dinner. Or you eat dinner and eat dinner. Abrir becomes abre because the L.A. usted form of abrir is abre. And so abre el regalo is open the gift. Some verbs have irregular affirmative two commands. Uh, many of them are just the yoga verbs or a few of the other kind of weird yoga verb type verbs that we learned at the beginning of the year, uh, which is why we'll be doing a reminder course on yoga verbs. So you basically just take the yo form of the verb and you drop the go. For example, poner in the yo form is pongo, so when I drop the go, then the command form becomes pon. Another example would be tener, and the yo form is tengo, and when I drop the go, it becomes ten. Mantener, this is kind of like when I was telling y'all before, um, kind of like with participles, if it has a prefix, you just keep the prefix and then, um, and then add the rest of the verb. So the yo form of mantener is mantengo, and then the command form would be manten. Now you'll notice that there's actually a accent over the E, and that's because we want tener to be the star of this verb no matter what. And so we have to put the E, the accent over the E, so that it gets pronounced manten instead of manten. Desir's yo form is digo, and its command form when I drop the go is D. So those are all pretty easy, right? Salir, salgo, and the command form would be sal. Venir becomes vengo, and the command form would be ven. Hacer and ser and ir have irregular two command forms that must be memorized because they're just weird. So hacer becomes as, ser becomes se with an accent, and ver becomes ve without an accent. Se gets an accent because, let me cover it up maybe, if you kind of covered that up right now, it looks like a reflexive pronoun, right? Me, te, se, nos, oh, uh, se, right? So we need the accent there so that people know it's a verb. The yo form of the verb saber, by the way, is also se. So when you see se in a sentence, you just have to look at the context and say, is somebody giving it to command or is somebody saying, I know how to do something? Usually when people use se in the affirmative way, like in the positive way, then they'll say yo se. So that usually will help you understand that they're talking about I know instead of the the two command, but here's the two commands. Hacer becomes as, ser becomes se, and ir becomes ve. And again, you need to memorize them. There's a nifty little, um, there's a nifty little phrase that you can memorize to remember affirmative two commands only. 
and that is that Vin Diesel has 10 weapons. But now I'll say it with a German accent, which is Vin Diesel has 10 weapons. You're welcome. Uh, I actually got that from Mr. Curry. I'm not sure where he got it, but it's awesome. Anyway, that's how you can remember your irregular affirmative two commands. Um, that includes all the go verbs that were that were removed of their go to make the the short command. So keep that in mind. Now, when you have pronouns associated with verb commands, um, those pronouns are attached to those affirmative commands. So you'll also need to add an accent in most cases unless it was a single syllable command. So a lot of these guys right here, the Vin Diesel has 10 weapons. Sorry, it's not, there we go. A lot of these guys um, are, are not gonna need an accent when you add one pronoun to the end of them. But if you did a, a verb like uh, ayudarme, so, or like ayudar, and then I'm telling you to help me. So ayuda is the original verb, and right now I'm covering up the me with my pinky. Uh, my pinky. So ayuda is the only verb I see. And originally it's ayuda, so I know the stress goes over the you, so I put the accent there, and then I attach the me to the end of it. Um, the other way to do it is to count three vocales, three vowels, one, two, three from the end, and that's almost always where you put the accent. There's always a few weird exceptions to that rule, but that usually will work. Uh, another one, dime la verdad, I don't need an accent because D was a singular, uh, a one-syllable command, but explica uh, was a two-syllable command, explica, a three-syllable command, so when I added le onto the end of it, then I needed to count back one, two, three vowels and put that accent. The only time that the three vowel count back doesn't work is if you're adding two pronouns to the end of a verb, or if you have a diphthong, which is two vowels that are making a special sound on their own. And we'll talk about that later. And that's it for affirmative two commands. Okay, so now we're going to talk about negative two commands. This is the beginning of all the extremely different and weird kind of way of doing things, but all of these will be the same. So negative two commands. I know, isn't it kind of funny that I could say do this, but if I say don't do that, it's going to sound completely different. Um, but that's the way it goes. So here we go. Negative two commands. You're going to use the yo form of the regular present tense verb, and you're going to drop the o, and you're going to add the opposite ending, basically. So ar verbs would get es endings, and ER verbs would get AS endings. Um, IR verbs, the same thing. So basically, AR verbs are going to get ES endings, and ER slash IR verbs are going to get AS endings. So, um, let's see. The same rule applies to verbs whose present tense form and in goes, go, yo, or ho. And here are some examples. Salir would be salgas, because the yo form is salgo, and I remove the o and I add as. Um, ofrecer would be ofrezcas, and that's kind of a weird verb, but it was a ZCR, ZC verb um, because of the C-E-R ending. If a C-E-R verb is preceded by an E, it's a Z-C-O, like conocer is conozco. This is the same rule, and we practiced that at the very beginning of the year. Escoger is going to get a J, and the reason for that is a G followed by an E makes a H sound, which is what we want. But a G followed by an O makes a GO sound, which is not what we want, so we needed that H sound, so we changed it to a J. So no escojas comida con mucha grasa. AR verbs take the ES endings, and ER and IR verbs take the AS endings, just like I said. Stem changing verbs are still going to stem change. So that's an example. This was encender, and this was añadir. 
and this was poner, so it was a go verb. Now, verbs ending in car, gar, and czar are going to do the same thing that they do in the preterite. So car is going to become k, gar is going to become gay, and czar is going to become se. But because it's not the preterite and it's not the yo form, it's not going to have an accent on the e. I don't need an accent on the e. But this is exactly why if you made an accent error on those, it was a big deal because you were changing completely what the verb meant. So, tokar would become tokis. No tokis, sorry. Uh, and gar would become guess, so no yegis. And then czar would become sis, so no cruces. Some verbs, such as ear, ser, dar, and a star, have irregular negative two commands, which this actually makes sense because ear in the yo form is voy, ser in the yo form is soy, dar in the yo form is doy, and a star in the yo form is a stoy. All of those have oy, so there's no O for me to take off the ending. There's an O and a Y, which makes it irregular. So that's how I remember those. And here's what they look like. Dar becomes, oh, actually, I'm going to show you all of them first. So dar, a star, ear, and ser. Dar becomes no this. A star becomes no estes. Ear becomes no vayas. And ser becomes no seas. Remember that pronouns are attached to affirmative commands, but with negative commands, they're actually going to become, they're actually going to become, let's see, where does it go? There we go. Before the verb. So affirmative commands, you're attaching pronouns to the end, but negative commands, you are putting the pronoun before the verb, which is what you should be used to right now. So instead of pica los, it's no los piques. The pronoun for tomates comes before the conjugated verb. And that's negative two commands.